There are a few reasons you might want to split a design. You can break up a project into pieces to fit on a smaller 3D printer, or divide objects into parts so that you can reorient them and avoid support material. You also might use it on screen in Tinkercad to add multiple colors to your model. One way to tackle splitting a design is a stack. I'll start by pulling a polygon into the work plane and increasing the height to 50 millimeters. Then I'll take a box and change the length to 25, the width to 25, and the height to 10. Now I'm gonna create a stack. I'll use Control D to duplicate and move that copy 10 millimeters up. Use Control D one, two, three more times to create a stack of five boxes. Select those five boxes, pull them over on top of the polygon and check that they totally encompass that shape. Then I'll use Control A to select all of the objects on my work plane and I wanna make five copies of this set of objects. I'll use Control D again, hold down the Shift key and use my arrow keys to tap out 10, 20, 30 millimeters. You can do this also with the ruler tool, essentially any measured way, so you know the exact spacing interval between those objects. Then we'll use Control D again, one, two, three times, so that we have five copies of our stack. Choose Control A, fit to view, we're going to front view, and switch to orthographic to make it easy to look at. Okay, click to deselect. Now on each of these, we want to delete one box. We'll delete the top, the second one down, the middle, near the bottom, and the bottom. And then for each of these, group them. I'll use Control G. Great. If you wanted to play with color in Tinkercad, you could go in and switch these up. Now in this case, because all of these pieces are identical, I could use the align tool, but you might be splitting something that is much more complex. And in that case, using the align tool is not gonna work, which is why I spaced them out in an interval that I know I can return. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and tap the arrows over. Click the next one and tap it over. Choose the next one and tap it over. Choose the next one and tap it over. So then I get my multicolored stack. The other thing I could have done, I can select them one by one and use D to drop them down to the platform. This is a good example of splitting your design up to print in separate parts. This way we have the bottoms of each object on the work plane, so when they get exported for 3D printing, they'll be ready to go. So as I said before, one primary use case for this workflow is to divide an object up so that you can reorient the parts for better 3D printing. One example of that is a sphere. I'll drop it on the platform and shift, scale it up to about 50 millimeters. There's no flat bottom on a sphere, and so it can be challenging to print a clean sphere on a desktop 3D printer without modifications. I'll pull a box into the workspace. I'm going to scale that up 55 millimeters. Then I will use Control D to duplicate it, and I'll change the dimensions on one side to negative 55. That's one way of mirroring and moving an object. I'm going to group those box shapes, select both of my objects, use the keyboard shortcut L to bring up the align tool and align them on the Y and X axes. Then I'll ungroup the whole objects. Sometimes when you ungroup whole objects, they return back to solids, that's no problem. I'll click on one box and delete it. We were just using it to help us center this object. Then I'll click on the box change it to a hole, select these objects, 
and group them. Because this is a symmetrical object, I can just use Control C, Control V to create a copy. Use M to flip it. And then both of these, I just need to reorient by rotating them 90 degrees and dropping them onto the platform. If you don't have a symmetrical object to start, just make sure you make two copies and you can delete one side on one copy and the second side on the other.